This video demonstrates how a structure undergoing rotational forces generates noise due to vibration. The rotational forces are applied on the structure in a mode superposition harmonic response simulation. The structural velocities are then transferred to a harmonic acoustic simulation that produces an acoustic signature. On the Workbench project page, I've configured the analysis systems as illustrated here. Assume that I've selected geometries and properly defined the necessary materials. Acoustic analyses require that the material property, speed of sound, is specified. I'll begin by opening the model in the linked modal and harmonic response systems. For this analysis, I'm going to manually specify an element size of 25 mm for all of the bodies of the model. Then, I'll add a fixed support around the base of the model. I'll specify this support on all of the faces of the structure's base. To do so, I'll use the Extend Selection feature. Select one of the base's faces, select the Extend Selection menu, and then select the option Extend to Limits. This option searches for faces that are tangent to the current selection, as well as all the faces that are tangent to each of the additional selections within the part. Sixteen faces are automatically selected. I'll change the Modes to Find property in the Analysis settings to 20, and then I'll solve the modal analysis. Once the solution is complete, I can see the various frequencies for the modes. Using a number of the modes, I can automatically generate deformation results. I can examine the natural frequencies and shapes of the modes that I'll use in the downstream harmonic response analysis. It's useful to check that the structure has the modes in the frequency range of interest for the downstream harmonic analysis. Now, under the harmonic response analysis, I'll specify a force load on the shaft of the structure using the component's Real Imaginary option. I'll define this loading condition so that a rotating force of 200N is specified around the Z-axis. The analysis settings specifications include the settings as shown. And for performance purposes, I'll turn off the stress and strain output properties and specify the constant damping ratio as 0.01. Now, I'll solve the harmonic response analysis. I'll specify a directional deformation result of the exterior of the structure. This enables me to see the result of the rotating force function of the frequency. Here's a frequency response deformation result for a face on the exterior of the model. This shows the evolution of the displacement for the region function of the frequency. Now, I'll open the harmonic acoustic system. I already specified the geometry that represents the air surrounding the housing. This is the area that I'll use to capture the noise generated by the structural vibrations. First, I need to specify the material for the part. Using the assignment property, I specify the material as air. Selecting the wireframe option, I can see the part from the previous analysis contained inside of the air. It's important to refine the mesh properly to capture the amplitude of the spatially varying pressure waves. It's recommended that there's a minimum of six quadratic elements per wavelength. Because the higher frequency of interest is 350 hertz in this example, and because the sound speed is 343 meters per second, I'll define an element mesh size of 100 millimeters. The analysis settings specifications are as shown. For the imported velocity loading condition, I'll select all of the faces of the structure. All inner faces correspond to the outer faces of the structure. I'll set the source frequency property to all. To define non-reflective boundaries, and therefore an infinite air domain, select all exterior faces of the air model and add a radiation boundary. To import the velocities of all the frequencies of the harmonic response analysis, select the imported load object, right-click, and select Import Load. Next, I'll create a construction surface based on the coordinate system of the air.
Next, apply an acoustic pressure and a sound pressure level to the construction surface. This enables me to analyze the pressure and sound pressure level in the mesh domain surrounding the housing. To plot results on the two spherical arcs that lie on perpendicular planes, I specify two far-field SPL results and set the sphere radius property for each to 2500 millimeters. I set phi and theta angles for the sphere. Acoustic results are typically displayed on mesh nodes. In this instance, we're calculating results on a virtual target, the spherical arc. The radiation boundary truncates the acoustic domain, which is supposed to be infinite. Therefore, I use far-field result technology to plot results on a spherical arc at a given frequency to understand the directivity of the source. I can also define a microphone to check the evolution of the noise function of the frequency at this location. Now I'll solve the analysis. Let's examine the results. Here, I can see an animation of the acoustic pressure result. These still images show the SPL and the far field graph. That concludes this demonstration. Thanks for watching.